Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, today was a beautiful day where I live, where I live in Santa Barbara, California. It was one of those days where the sky was blue. This time of year, the jacaranda trees are out with that incredible purple. And in a way, the miracle of life was really clear today. I mean, it was just really precise and you couldn't mistake the beauty. You just couldn't mistake the beauty and the magic of being in a human body and being on this extraordinary planet Earth at this time. And yet we all know that there are places and moments and experiences in all our lives, some more traumatic and more dramatic and more tragic in a way than others, where that magic and that beauty and that recognition of that is less, is less so, is less real, is less realized, is less apparent. And in our hearts again, we know that there is a transcendental experience, an experience that religions throughout history have talked about, that, that holy people of all religions, of all races, colors, creeds have talked about, an experience that even transcends the beauty of a day, that even transcends the beauty of the jacaranda tree, or includes it, let's say. Let's say not transcends it. Let's say not separates it. But that there is an experience of all of it, a oneness, a connection, a truth, a love of God, a truth, a love, God, however you would describe it in whatever race, religion, color, again, country. There is that experience. And we know, whether it's all day for a second a day, once a year in the middle of the night when we wake up, that that experience is what, in a sense, we're in a human body for, is what this experience of this planet Earth, of what this experiment on Earth is about, that we humans come into the recognition of that love, of that oneness that the miracle of this experiment is that we're all part of that and then seemingly we come in separate bodies in separate countries in separate continents have separate tastes and separate cultures and and all the distinctions and differences and those become real and and the truth and the one and the love become the illusion and that it's exactly reversed because the truth and the love and the oneness are the truth they are the way. They are the, the reality. And all the things that we think are separate are so minute in the context of that vastness, that, that glory, that magic that created the jacaranda tree, that created the sky and each one of us, and that we all are. And we can have that experience. And when that experience is real for us more and more and more, then the joy of being in a human body, even in the context of the things that happen that seem less so, we know that there is the love. We can experience the love. And, you know, again, that's what this bridging show is about, because really, in essence, that's what every bridging show is about. It's about coming together for this hour and realizing, remembering, making the love realer, vibrating that love. When people ask me what the Bridging Heaven and Earth show is about, I mean, probably I say different things at different times, but the, you know, depending on, on who I'm talking to. But generally, it's to spread the vibration of love. And that is the point of this show. And people literally come in, drive in, fly in, literally walk in sometimes if, they're, if their vehicles break down to share their life story of their quest, of their movement towards that love, of their hunger for that love, of that, their realization of that love. And tonight we have someone, again, who, whose life has been a story of that, that quest, that realization, that quest, that realization, because it's an ongoing moment-to-moment -moment recognition. Mitchell May is a spiritual teacher. He's a healer. He had an unbelievably horrible auto accident, life-changing auto accident 
a, a long time ago, Earth time, where bones and bones and bones were broken. Everything was shattered. That he, they thought he'd never walk again. He'd have a life of unbearable and unbelievable suffering. And he basically made medical history through a series of, of understandings, a series of realizations, where he basically successfully regenerated bones and, and tissues and, and, and nerves. Impossible. But the power of, of love, the power of intent can do that. And then in the context of that, and as his research into the, the healing arts, the, the, the healing of the body, the healing of the heart, led him to, to found this company that puts out herbs and vitamins and, and uh, all different kinds of vitamin C's and uh, supplements that bring us back into that harmony in the physical form and then hopefully to bring us into harmony of the heart, to heal the body, heal the heart, heal the whole. And that's what his life is dedicated to. I mean, day after day after day, in an unrelenting way, is to heal. And we're honored he's come, in a, in a sense, a long way to be with us tonight. And, you know, it's going to be an honor for you. And as we normally do, we have videos, beautiful music videos from Constance Demby and, and Alessia video that some of you have seen before that we wanted to show again on this show. As also, as most of you know, we have an, we're in the middle of an international art project, ongoing, infinite, inclusive. And we're going to show a couple of pieces of art that have come in about that. Uh, maybe I'll describe it a little later. It's basically, it's, we got a vision, acupuncture points for the planet, all these incredible people. Everybody's invited to participate. And that all these people, whoever wants to, is, is welcome to create a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. We'll have, you know, a virtual gallery on the internet. We'll have art openings all over the world just to spread that, again, to spread that vibrational love. And we'll have, we have pieces uh, from two artists uh, who've sent in extraordinary pieces, one from uh, Canada, Beverly Hogue, and another one more local, Christina Altfeld. And so, you know, the potential is, is that there's a lot of vibration of love here in the next 50 minutes or so. And join with us, you know, share yours with us, settle in. So as we normally do, uh, join me in a short meditation, and then we'll have the video, Constance Denby, and then Mitchell, and more videos and more art. So please join me in a meditation. Thank you. So we'll start tonight's show with uh, a video by a good friend of Bridging. We've shown her video before, not this particular one. This is the first. I don't think it's ever been on television before. She sent it to us special. Uh, Constance Demby, Dragon's Eye. It's an extraordinary piece. Settle in. It'll get you in a space to really appreciate what Mitchell's story is about. So enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. So that was Constance Denby, Dragon's Eye. Obviously an extraordinary piece. Thank you, Constance. And the picture you see now is Christina Allfeld, a uh, local California woman who did this Lahaini Buddha II. Uh, she's done a bunch of these in different colors. They're extraordinary. This is one of the pieces that came in for the Bridging Heaven and Earth Art Project. So we're on the set with Mitchell. Welcome, Mitchell. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. So, yeah, I talked at the opening a little bit about this extraordinarily violent and traumatic accident that, in a way, didn't turn your life, as we've talked about, but, you know, added an emphasis to it. Why don't you talk about how that, you know, affected the flow of your life and led to, you know, a lot of different things that you did? Okay. Uh, it was 1972, and I was really on quite a, a search to see if I could find how to tap into this life force principle. I had experienced it spontaneously before, but I was curious, could one really tap into it in an ongoing way? Could that be the source of one's ongoing life? And could it inform me on a daily basis? And I had no idea how to really do that. But I, I knew something more was possible beyond what I'd learned in my education, beyond what the social structure, beyond what the political structure at that time was telling us we were all about. And as uh, circumstances would have it, I was a passenger in a Volkswagen van, and a, we were going to a bluegrass music festival, and a car going close to 100 miles an hour out of control hit on my side of the car. Wow and to sort of condense the story uh, I was actually pronounced dead at the uh, scene of the accident wow. it took them uh, close to an hour to be able to cut me out of all the wreckage wow. and uh, I had over uh, 40 broken bones uh, nerves completely severed organ tissue was ripped out uh, and they did not they were able to resuscitate me I went in and out of coma, and when they got me to the emergency room in the hospital, they kept trying to awaken me, and they were trying to get my permission uh, to amputate my legs. Both of them? Uh, they said if they didn't amputate one, that the, the trauma, the infections, would enter into the other one very shortly, that there was no hope of, of saving the legs, wow. that I was not going to walk again. Wow. Uh, that they'd be very, very lucky if I were to stay alive. And a... And they're asking you to make medical decisions in that state. Yes. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> You're and, obviously a clear thinker at that right. moment. Yeah. Well, but something in you said, let's not do that? Yeah, it, 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 there was that moment for me of saying, hey, this is an opportunity. Really? I mean, you remember True, that. It was a very clear, sort of, clear wow. sort of existential place. In this of, incredible, beat up, traumatized, yes. sh in shock being. Yes. You remember that specific? Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, to say, this is an opportunity to fully explore and see. The healing process. The healing process. Could one tap in? Because medically, I was told there is no hope. So in other words, like something in you said instinctively, this is like an opportunity I've been given to test what I, my yes. passion in a way. And that in any event, as I say, the medical model was saying was there's nothing right. we can do for you. We have, we, so we in can't. a sense you had nothing to lose and right. everything to gain. And, and, wow. and the prognosis, the, well the prognosis was even with medical intervention, I was most likely not going to make it. So you didn't have, in a sense, you didn't have that much right. to lose. You were, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, okay, and, and oftentimes, that is where that transformational uh, compression potentiality comes, when we're really at our wit's end, when we're at a loss, when we don't know where to go. I, I keep saying, I hope it's lit where we get more subtle, so it doesn't yes, take, yes. you know, that level of trauma to Well, I was pretty dense. It. No, I know, I'm, I'm saying, I mean, that, it does take getting hit by a Mack truck. Yes. 
You know, a lot yeah. of times that's like the old expression. Well, we hope we develop a subtlety that, you know, we're in the moment and, you know, we realize when disharmony is in sooner than yes. the back I, I think it's fairly obvious to, to certain aware people that, that the world situation right now is being hit by a Mack truck. truck. Right, and right. It's, it's that time for us for to us wake to, up and, right. and to shift some of our way of thinking and, and reacting Being, and responding, right. yes. So in that hospital situation, uh, they put a cast on me from my neck down to the bottom of my feet. Wow. And uh, you know, the message is, you're never gonna walk. We don't think you're gonna live. We wanna amputate one leg, possibly two legs. And I say, no. And they, and they still had to get your permission or somebody. Yes. And then they attempted to get the permission of family members of mine since I was being you know, resistant or uh, not wanting to go that path. And fortunately, my uh, family uh, stood with where my wow. choices were. That's, that's really yes. phenomenal in a way. And it, I was uh, transferred to Vanderbilt. Uh, it was in the south, Vanderbilt Medical Center, which is the main medical center uh, in that area, and went in and out of coma and deteriorated. Went down to uh, 90 pounds, lost 95% of my vision because the infections Were spread uh, into my eyes. I lost my hearing, was not able to Wow, uh, that was eat. some kind of summer. Uh, so, yes. Oh, my God, man. Uh, it, was, uh, it was nonstop. Wow. And, I, uh, and what was your like mental state during this period? Well, I was like, okay, now I'm deaf. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm blind. This I mean, is not going well. I mean. Certainly, I was also terrified. Terrified. The, the, the pain, I had a type of pain, it's called causalgia. And that's where the nerves are so damaged that they're in constant chronic firing. Oh my God. Uh, not unlike when the... If you, anyone's thinking of going to eat... Wait. <laughs> right. don't, don't, I'm giving don't. you the, the, the toned yeah, down version here. I can here. imagine. Yeah, uh, I can imagine. It's like when the dentist hits a tooth. You know, it's constant. constant. And wow. they have no medical treatment for that either. Um, and actually calls algae, uh, the only way to stop that pain is amputation, to, to cut above where the, the, the damage pain. is. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, 21 going on 22 as a young man, and so the pain, I was terrified of the pain. I was... I mean, the best time of day was sleep. I, I could not you hardly could not. sleep, except for, you know, that they were giving me drugs and stuff to sleep, and so that was the only time it, wow. could, it became tolerable. And... But there, was there like a faith and hope, or a, a dream, or a passion, or a, a knowing, like kind of behind that? Yes, I, w I would say that there was more of a knowing but not, not a certainty. Yeah, right, you weren't uh, exactly sure. Yeah. Yeah. The knowing that there's something else, there's something more, but still not knowing how. it's how. gonna manifest yeah, in this Yeah, how do right. I tap into that? And right. you have to remember, in 1972, acupuncture even was against the law. There were not... Very progressive. Yes, very there, there was not a consciousness movement that was very large yet into these type of things. And finally, they decided to transfer me to UCLA Medical Center because my family, my father was on faculty at UCLA, and I was transferred there. And I got the exact same Diagnosis. medical story. Right. And, and they were, I was presented to 70 medical specialists in a, in a special conference, and the unanimous opinion. It sounds like a Seinfeld yeah. episode. You're lying there and they throw a, you know, yeah. a mint in the air. And, oh, and, my God. And the story is the same nothing, story. Nothing. You're not going to walk again. You've got to have this leg amputated immediately. And this is after like three or four months? This is three or four months. I've you know, deteriorated further. Uh, the cell structure in, in my body, our, our cells have a, they're bathed in potassium. It's just how, how our body washes itself. And the potassium in the cells were rupturing every day. And so I'm starting to actually leak out. Uh, my own body is dissolving. And um, <laughs> I feel like you're your own science fiction movie. Uh, yes. And wow. And, and still in you, after three or four months of almost constant pain, starting to ooze. I was Not beginning sleeping. to lose it. Okay, for sure. I was going to say this guy has got one <laughs> intense intention and and belief. I mean, that's really. I mean, even though you, you know, I mean, I talk about you know, like, 
you know, you can have this, you know, faith and stuff, then you stub your toe and it's like gone, you, you know. know? It, I mean, it's really, it's a beautiful story. It's, it's when it's one, one thing after the next gets ripped away right, from I you. Know. It's you know, at, at, the, at the one level, it's excruciating, terrifying, uh, you know, embarrassing as your body functions right, as a young right. man or are right. no longer there. <laughs> your ego is getting yeah, real bruising. Totally. And on the other level, everything you've ever hung on to, all your beliefs, you all your lose. habits are also getting ripped away. So there, there is a, a vacuum that's starting to form, an emptiness. Mm. And it's in that place that something new, something unexperienced before has an opportunity to enter. Now, I didn't consciously know that this but was can happening. Can you almost feel this happening? I mean, if you look back now that this opening was happening and something in you was like that knowingness was filling it, even in, in the pain, in the heart of the pain. It was what? more at that, at that stage. It was more the, the tearing apart, the ripping apart. Because to hold out, you know, against the medical establishment after three or four, you know, after mm -hmm. five minutes, maybe I'm a big, strong, tough guy. <laughs> and I believe in this, but mm -hmm. after three or four months of the pain, to still have that belief is, you know, is a really great gift in a way. And I think in some ways it became an anchor for me to have some sense of self. That was the one place right. that was going to remain as something yeah. that was uh, a choice that I was going to make. Yeah, everything else you couldn't control anything. Right, and the, so as your choices, as your options just get ripped apart, my experience in retrospect now is always, the, the, within that experience, the more ripped apart, ripped away you are, the more opportunity resides there. And in that space, the most unexpected things often can occur, even if you don't know about them. And you don't have to believe in them. You don't have to have the faith. It's just a phenomenon that occurs. And of an open space. Of an open space. Right. And what, it, what filled in that space was it turned out at UCLA in 1972, they had a laboratory they were doing experiments in in a scientific study of what they call parapsychology. And that is the scientific investigation of what we commonly would call something like ESP or psychic phenomenon. But they were studying it under controlled conditions of physics, chemistry, biology, uh, medical phenomenon, psychological approaches to it. And they had a whole team. And they were primarily in this early stage of that project studying a man named Jack Gray, who had a ability, I was told, to initiate, to facilitate, to activate a healing uh, experience regeneration. for people. Right. Now, and I, you knew you needed a regeneration. Yes, but I came from a highly scientific family, very academically oriented. You know, I have a brother who's a physician from Yale, my other brother went to MIT in mathematics, my other father from MIT in engineering. But you were oozing, so you knew yes. you were so something that, else that is that something that, th that those they didn't know how to deal logical with. approaches right. were not going to touch this experience. Right. You, you knew that almost yes. to the root of you. So this man came, and I'm in intensive care and isolation at UCLA Hospital. Wow. And this man walks into that this uh, environment, Jack Gray. Jack Gray and I'm told a healer's gonna come. And I have had no experience in my life with a healer. I don't know what a healer is. I sort of thought someone in purple capes and a, right. a wand was gonna come. Right. And he walks in, he's just a very ordinary looking guy, but he has these very intense eyes. And the moment he looks at me, it's like something is gonna be burned up inside of me. This, guy, wow. this guy's on fire. Really? That's yes. Fantastic. And yeah. he's just looking right through me. And at first I was scared. Because. <laughs> and you're in a situation where if somebody could scare you, you've lost everything. Yeah. And, you're, and you're oozing. And if somebody could scare you. Well, what was scary was. The power of it. That he could see through me. And you know how we all want to protect. We don't want people to see our fear. We don't want them to see our shame. We don't want right. them to see our weaknesses. 
You know, we, we, we build these unbelievable defenses around that that drain us of our life energy, right, actually. Exactly, right. But we're you know, spending so much time faking it. Yes. Know. Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, some people spend 80, 90 percent of their life force in that dimension. Uh -huh. But so he burned right through that very quickly with me mm. and said he's, he was here to wake something up in me that I knew was in me, but I didn't know how to wake up. Well, Which and was you pretty, knew that that was the question you were, you yes, were asking in a sense. Yes, I had been asking that question actually for a few years. Before the accident, yes. yeah, right. But here it was, was a need, and here was someone who said, this that's, is the oh, that's most... That's what I can do. Yeah, and this is the most ordinary thing. This is who we really are. And we've just forgotten how to do that. I'm here to help remind you how to do that. And through the course of time, we spent the next seven years together. Really? And I mean, I'm speeding through no, the sequence of events, but through our work together, and especially in the first couple of days, bones began to regenerate, nerves began to regenerate, muscle tissue began to regenerate, my eyes regenerated, my hearing cells regenerated. These are things that medically, yeah, there was no they chance. can't. It's not happening. No, there's no medical record of these things ever happening before of this nature. And one after the other just kept happening. In, in that context, did the medical community say, give some idiotic reason for it, or it's not possible, it's not happening? <laughs> there was a, quite a split in the different you know, medical uh, community actions that were going on. Some doctors were totally offended that a, quote, uneducated man like this would come into intensive care why they didn't even let him in. Right, and that he would be guiding a healing process, a medical process, and, and even doctors. worse, it's working. Yes. That's even worse. Others who were true scientists were right. very curious. How is this happening? What is happening? And they wanted to find out and you know, hook us up to all kinds of monitors. And uh, so they were hooking us up. It. And they started, they started hooking us up to various pieces of equipment to register you know, very subtle bodily activities going on because Jack could control his flow of blood, his heart rate. He, you know, he could stick a, a knife skewer or something through his arm and they could watch it heal up within seconds. And you know, wow. he was teaching me how to do these things. And he felt after working with me for a couple of weeks that he was, he was from an old school. Okay? He was an old timer. And he was looking- Is he still alive? No, he's not. Mm -hmm. He was looking for an apprentice. Isn't and had been amazing? waiting for many years and felt that I was the one that he wanted to teach. Wow. And asked me if I wanted to take that journey with him. And he didn't uh, show me the uh, fine print of when I signed up for this. Yeah, right. And, Be careful what you yes, wish for. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And so I said yes. And that's where and we And this said, was when you were mostly physically healed. You were, I was still in the hospital. I was still, still in, in intensive hospital. care. I spent... Uh, almost an entire year in the hospital. I spent a year and a half in a wheelchair. Tried to learn how to crawl again, how to right. walk again, wow, that's how amazing. to reuse my eyes, my hearing, my muscles. How to, I, there are parts of my body, I don't even have cartilage, but everything still moves and, and bends and no discomfort. And, and it shouldn't. No, it shouldn't. But, it but, shouldn't. It, but, but you know, part of what We're he miracle, taught me right? was how to let the body adapt, how to let consciousness be free and free, open okay. so that the unexpected can occur. Right. On that note, let's, let's do the second video, which is a really amazing video. Let me set it up a little. Some of you have you know, heard this song, All the Same Love. Leslie and I wrote it. It's on the Leslie of Bridging Heaven Earth CD. Well, the crew and I put together this really beautiful music video with that as the, the background music. And you'll see the images, and you'll see the images uh, of nature and the beauty of nature. And then we put together photos from the LA Times, uh, one of which was a father and two sons at the funeral of the mother who was killed by a suicide bomber, and the others four Palestinian sisters who were at, in a wake or a funeral for their 15-year-old sibling who had been killed in that whole freakish thing. And just look at their faces, look at the sameness of them, look at the oneness, you know, it's just how can we keep doing this trauma to each other? 
when is the time we're going to recognize the love and the oneness? So all the same love, Leslie, you just watch it settle in. You know, let it touch your heart. It's there for that. Okay, enjoy. Give it love. 
Hi, welcome back. So that was a very powerful video. I mean, it's just really it's time. You know, whatever way we see ourselves as separate. I mean, the heart is open. You know, the heart hurts when people get hurt in your family. The heart hurts when people get hurt in your community. Let's try not to do it. Let's try to find the love. And also, the picture you see between us now is Last Chance Cafe. Last Chance Cafe by Beverly Hoag. She's a Canadian. She was really just delighted to be part of the Bridging Art Project. And this is her manifestation, different from a lot of the others, of what Bridging Heaven and Earth meant to her and how it manifested through her. So we're talking to Mitchell. So why don't you talk a little more about, like, okay, so this healing process, you know, was taking place. This healer had come into your world, yes. you know, like magic. And then it led you to be his apprentice and how that process went and how it led you to, to try to make this kind of energy, this information available on a larger kind of scale. The, the responsibility that I felt with the amount of the gift of life and knowledge that Jack gave me was very immense. And his uh, unspoken but very strong mandate was for me to share this. And so at first I worked with hundreds and hundreds of patients who were in incurable or very difficult uh, medical or emotional or physical predicaments. And what I noticed, even though, and this was all done at, through that UCLA Medical Center uh, research grant, that while we got quite profound results doing our healing work, many people who were coming to us, their problems, their issues actually were coming from many years of a misunderstanding of how to live a wholesome life. It wasn't that they had been in an accident. It wasn't that they were born with some congenital problem. It wasn't that you know they were 85 years old and were just had a long, good, hard life. These were people who were eating uh, uh, too much processed food. They were malnourished at a subclinical level. And so when attempts to heal them would occur through their life, it was almost like if you look at a bucket that's got a hole in it. There's a leak in the bucket. So they would keep trying to fill this up with water or life force, but it would drain out. And I realized that I had a waiting list of almost three years for people wow. to get to see me. And you were working plenty of hours, plenty of days. I was 20, 22 hours a day, seven days a week. That's all that I did was healing work. Wow. And I felt terrible that you had to turn people, people away. away, people in, in dire life circumstances. And I thought, how can I touch more people? And also, what is the source of a lot that, of these holes causing of the these problem. holes? And what is behind that? And I started looking at some of the political and social and environmental reasons. Uh, there was the diet, there was greed. Greed, greed is needing yeah. to be hugely healed at this time. Right. To me, that is way that, out it's, of it's a, a plague. Right. Way right out now. of line. Um, and it, it causes people to to do things that proliferate suffering, tremendous suffering. And so I made a, a decision. Because part of our research project was, could we create a life force supplement that people could consume that could help their bodies, their buckets, I'll call them, from leaking? How, and then fill them up so that when they breathed in life, when healing did come to them, when they did meditate, whatever their practice was, that energy would stay with them to regenerate, rejuvenate, and revitalize them rather than just being a temporary experience. And we spent seven years creating and perfecting this product that we call Pure Synergy. That is exactly what that's designed for. And we only were doing that in a research capacity and in, and in clinical studies. Then people asked if we would make that product available on a much larger scale because the suffering is so grand right. uh, you know, yeah, across the, the world. Is so, yes. yeah, right. and. I really didn't want to do that. I didn't want to get into business because business is yeah, tough stuff. 
I mean, and the concept about it is that it has to be evil if it's got money. Yes, above. right. And that's it, the, that's the generation I grew up. I, I saw yeah. the corruption. I saw the greed. I saw the yeah, but abuse. But it's only paper, and it's the illusion. It's, yes. Yeah, but it has that tendency to. And then I realized, you know, business is one of the strongest influences in the world. And if we can transform business, if we can help transform the agricultural system, if we can transform and help people be more honest, to be more humanitarian. Yeah, to treat others as they'd want to be yes, treated, to deal with integrity, even in business. That the way to take this healing gift that Jack had given to me to another dimension, another level, was to take these principles and apply them to business, to social, to political, to anything and everything, and that's what we did. And we created a structure that requires auditing everything that we do, uh, environmentally, economically, ethically, to make sure that every interaction that we have is the best it can be. Is the best it can be, and that there is no mm. suffering created from what we do, and that the outcome of what we do is beneficial to people. And that has been the experiment that I've been with now for the last 15 years, and watching it spread globally. Uh, our company and our influence is, is on almost in every country now, almost. And, and, and it started with, with it like this healing powder, and then you saw that there were specific uh, like disharmonies that could be, you know, with an enzyme here. I mean, how did you, like, branch out? I mean, if this synergy powder was like the amalgam of all this scientific energy and research, how did it come out that other products were even needed okay. after that? As, as our research kept advancing over the last 30 years, the Pure Synergy was designed really to help enhance the energy field, the energy body, the life force of a person. To me, that's the most fundamental element that the we root can do. Of yes. The human, right. And then, secondly, is we're in a body here on Earth, and most people really are not enjoying that experience. They're they're suffering. They they don't feel well. They don't feel vital. They don't feel joyous in their body very often. It's kind of a random moment. Right. How could we design something at that physical level that would support the cellular structure, the regenerative structure, so that the cells get fed everything that they need so that they can really prosper and regenerate and duplicate themselves in the most magnificent way that we're designed? So in other words, it's just an ongoing process. So this pure synergy, the powder, the, 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 you know, the shake, mix or something yes. evolved as as our time research and evolved research and, and as we witnessed different challenges coming up for even humanity after, yes even there's an, more there's more challenges. pollution now there's more viruses now there's more fear and and so how do we help people deal with those things so that they can get on with what's most important in their life so Which they is can an be present. Of love. Yes, yeah, right. but if if they're not feeling well, yeah, they have to get to zero or, or neutral first before yes, they can fly. Yes, exactly. And so now there are tens of thousands of people who are involved in this, whose lives are you know being uh, valued, that are being improved, that are being uh, supported, so that they can get on with other contributions that they have to make in the world. So it's in other words, you're healing, you're bringing a harmony into the physical form, and then, you know, which way does it go? Does it go from the root to the body, or you know, there's no separation, but it's it's it, just it, that it circular depends, process. I think it depends on sort of who the person is. Some right. people it's more from the physical on up. Other people they're more emotional, and, and it's just to to harmonize it all. Yes, and then as I say, from a business point of view, you know, we've created our company to run entirely on wind power and turned our entire our entire city of Moab, Utah is now run on over 15 percent wind power and we were partially responsible for converting that over. And you do that with like, I mean I know that there are a lot of like uh, herbs and uh, uh, plants that you grow in a certain way yes. that's more beneficial to the planet, yes. more beneficial you know, to the workers. <laughs> Not, you know. Every, everything we do has to pass, you know, certified organic. 
Everything that we do has to make sure it has no chemicals. We have to dry everything at very low temperatures so that its molecular structure is not in any way damaged, damaged or harmed. So that the, uh, the original life essence is retained and the essential oils are retained and the beneficial compounds are protected and preserved so that when we consume those, they can share that with us because these are really gifts right, of life. Gifts. Yeah, right. And, and it's, it's like anything, if you respect life, life respects us in, in exchange. Right. It, it's the same in a relationship. If you respect somebody, they will respect you and then life builds to a much richer right, experience. It's, right. it's, one and one it becomes 11. Yes, in that, very, right. very much so. And so quite honestly, Alan, we're, we're experimenting with how do we do these things in the business community? How do we do these things in a humanitarian, in a charitable way? And that is where we're, uh, we're moving to. And it's funny because we talk about, you know, the show like bridging, like, you know, we started 12 years ago and, mm -hmm. you know, the same thing. And we talk about it's perfect in getting better. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Because everything, you know, everything about it could be better. Of course. On some level. But I, you know, the amount of intensity and intent and everybody's trying, you know, to make it, mm -hmm. you know, and the intent at the root is the pure part. And so you do the best you can and you go eat and you yeah. do, you know, and, and you really get that feeling of the, the cont not, it's not exactly content, but you're happy doing it, you're joyous doing it, and you know that the energy could be there to do it a million times better. Yes, and, and it's an experiment because right. there's not a lot of models right. out there for all of us who are interested in these things that we can emulate. And, and our goal was, can we create a template not to be t exactly duplicated, but to give some pointers to say, hey, this can work. It's like with my healing. Now that certain things have healed in me, other people know have that, that possible, possible right. and so they right. can heal. But until they have that jump, right. that it's possibility. It's like a four minute mile. You yes. couldn't do it. And then when one guy did it, it's like, oh my God, yes. the next 20 guys did it like an hour. <laughs> you know? and, and my hope is I become obsolete. I really no, I don't want to be a healer, no, quite I honestly. I want people I mean, to know it's in them. Do you still do personal healings yeah. uh, to you know, family members or friends? For me, everything I do is imbued with that approach because that's what, what my teacher... Like love and motion. Yes, and sometimes there's moments when it needs to be very physical. You know, my son the other day, he was doing a flip off the couch and he just totally wiped out. And, uh, you know, this was going to be one of those things where his ankle was probably going to need to be casted. And it's like, okay, you know, this, I'm this here. is the moment. Yeah. I happen to be here. Right? <laughs> and so, you know, we, we, we took right. care of that very, very quickly. Right. Um, but again, my, my goal is to help people as realize people as possible. that it's right. within them. It's not me. It is definitely, I have nothing special that anybody else doesn't have. Right. It's just like what happened for me is I knew it was there, but I didn't know how. And just like ride, learning to ride a bicycle, you can talk about it, but until you get on it and it becomes second nature, then you can really ride. And that's what it's about, is yeah. for us to help people learn how to really be their true self. How to be, yeah, right. How to get to their core yes. essence. And, and then everything. all kinds of things unfold from there. Right. Yeah, that's and, beautiful. And, um, and, and do you find that the response of people throughout the world in the new business model, the new, are responding to it positively, are really feeling like, you know, we've been talking a lot about you know, the new paradigm is really here. Yes. You know, it's not here full blown quite yet but that you can really sense it coming, and you could sense it coming. Uh, for the first time, Bridging, as I said, Bridging's done shows for 12 years. This is the first season that we're actually at a place that wants us. Beautiful. That this studio where mm. we're sitting in, people actually want us here. Before, we were paying the going rate for a studio, and before that, we were at a place that people didn't want us. Mm -hmm. And then you get, interestingly enough, a company like Google, mm -hmm you know, one of the largest yes. companies in the world. And I've talked to people there, and they say the corporate policy is to treat others as, as they'd want to be treated. It, it, I see that it's happening. Right. It's certainly, you know, as like the, the pebble in the, in the, right. in the in lake. The lake. It's, it's, the it's spreading. But just today, I have an email from this group in Japan that wants to write a book about how our company is doing this so that model can go into Japan. 
Wow. I'll be going uh, to Taiwan in, in teaching, going to Germany in teaching these principles. Yes, there are, and I sit on boards of different companies who want this new perspective, and they're not sure how to do it, and so they're bringing in someone like myself or others. Wow. So, I mean, but what you're doing is being respected yes. on a larger scale than you, almost people who don't know it would imagine you would yes. say. Yes, and, and part of that is because I very much respect what they've accomplished. And because they have a skill set, if it can be channeled Absolutely. in a compassionate way, right. in if a generous at way, the root of it, right. then they could really transform many, many people's lives uh, to the betterment. Right. You know, we think about that, you know, in terms of movies. I mean, if, if movies could really have, like we had in a recent show, this guy Michael Gorgian, who did this movie Illusion with Kirk mm -hmm. Douglas. I think there's a copy of actually, if you want to see oh, it. I'd, I'd love yeah, that. I think we have copies of it. But, and that was his intent. I mean, you think you're in this theater and you're like this captive audience. Yes. So if, if all these aspects start changing and, and really hitting the, you know, the media and the business and health and all that, that, that the momentum starts growing yes. and the 100th monkey or the 80th monkey. Or, and I think that really we see that happening people, more and more. People want to remember. Right, Pe absolutely. Pe people, they want to feel you know, love. And as you say, in, the heart, in their heart of hearts, they want that. Right. Yes, many of us have you know, some level of scar tissue over right. that, and right. that needs to be melted away. Right. But underneath that, right. it's what it's we right all there. want. Right. And some Who of doesn't us want to feel love and share yeah. it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple. Yes. Know. So, okay, we got about a minute left, 30 seconds. What would you say to everybody? Say to me, and what would you say to everybody? That the same thing that was awakened in me resides in everyone. Again, I'm, not, I'm nothing special other than I'm as special as everybody else is and that, that potential, that life essence resides in everyone. You've recognized the magic. Yes, and, and for them to start just little by little believing in that for themselves and watch what happens. Okay, good. If you want any information, Michael, Synergy, anything, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053. You know, it's really about the connection, the love. We all are it. We know it in our heart of hearts, everywhere. We know it. Let's just be open to it, come to it. We love you. God bless you. Good night.